Alright, so anyway, I started texturing this using the stuff that I texported from the last video. And uh, right now, I'm just making some uh, highlighted edges for my diffuse map. So I'm running this through the X normal filter. I'm setting uh, the settings to uh, something that I'll definitely post in a note. And uh, what this allows us to do is it allows us to get um, it allows us to get some nice highlighted edges automatically. And this way, um, we can really make the edges stand out on the specular and just make them definitely pop more. So this is very easy. And uh, once I've done that, I can now uh, drag, shift drag that into my texture, my uh, diffuse texture PSD. And I can uh, adjust the curves and whatnot so that it can easily, uh, so that you can see it better. And uh, yeah, there we go. So what you should do is you should have basically black and white for that. And uh, it's going to be thrown on screen and at a low opacity for the, diff for the diffuse map. So now I'll basically do the same thing for the mask. I'm going to throw it on screen and uh, lower the opacity. So I've already done some texturing in here. Not a lot. I just basically threw down a base texture on uh, some parts. But uh, I couldn't show you that because I started and I lost the video that I uh, started it with. So my bad. So now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the uh, cleaning up this mask that we created. This mask that uh, really helps bring out the details. So I'm cleaning it up just because uh, some parts baked funny. I'll go back and uh, and fix that later too. So I've also got this in. Uh, in Marmoset open too. I've got that all set up. So anyway, right here, what I've, d I've just I'm doing here is I'm setting up actions to uh, to save my P my PSD as the TGA for Marmoset. And so I can just press the button and it'll save it as the diffuse. Dot TGA. So there we go, that's starting to look uh, more like a gum and less like a white block. Now obviously it's uh the specular uh, highlight is a lot is, is too broad, so we can turn the uh the we can fool with the exponent and the sharpness or aka the gloss until we get to where we want. So I think this was the setting that I used in the end. So I uh, right there, what I did is I forgot to uh, forgot to uncheck, uh, I forgot to press stop, stop recording the uh, action, and it decided to do everything. Uh, yeah, don't forget that. So anyway, uh, taking a look around here, and uh, just looking at my references, uh, seeing how everything is damaged, and uh, for this, I want to do a more extreme example of uh, wear and tear. Just to show you how stuff is done. Uh, right there also I closed uh, 3D Studio Max because I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to be working in Marmoset and Photoshop. So I'm going to select some parts here uh, that I'm gonna, I want to brighten up. Parts that are silver. And uh, so right there, I'm gonna have it as an action. And later, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, detach that actions tab and just throw it in the corner. I could bind it to a hotkey, but I don't feel like it. Actually, I might have in the end. So now I'm making a, a new group for our uh, scratches. Now I I far far prefer to uh, paint scratch scratches uh, manually, but uh, okay I guess I'm not painting scratches. But what I'm doing is I'm adding some 
black, like, general wear and tear. It's actually probably better if you do this with a dark, dark brown and not a straight up black. And so now, uh, Photoshop's gonna load for a bit. And I'm make another one using uh, white grunge. There we go. Throw that on overlay. And uh, just really run over this with uh, this brush a couple times. And uh, this is going to take me a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it on overlay because white on overlay is a lot less strong and it acts a bit differently than if it was on uh, just a low opacity of normal. So I'm just going to go through this with my special brush that I uh, found on the internet. This is probably my favorite brush of all time. If you know how to use it, you can do pretty much any kind of grunging with it. Uh, forgetting that I don't, I'm not using a mask on that layer for whatever reason. There we go. So I took out the uh, actions palette and just threw it on the bottom there. So in Marmoset, I have the uh, I have the specular and the I, I have the yeah the specular and the norm, and the diffuse map set to run off the diffuse map texture. This will give us a little bit of uh, material definition until we get to the point where we can make the specular. So uh, I'm gonna go through this and I'm going to. See what else uh, needs fixing up. So it looks decent with the specular highlight on it, but uh, as you see, there's no detail or anything that you can see at least, probably. So now here, I'm going to uh, I'm just gonna poke through my brushes, and I'm gonna do another layer of black blobbiness. Now this is a bigger a bigger uh broader kind of blobbiness instead of just uh little like speckly blobs. Speckly grunge. And uh play with the mask uh brightness and whatnot. And uh, duplicate it, invert it, rotate it, so that you can get a, um, a white blobs layer without any real effort. So there we go, we now have some uh, blobbiness in our map, and it looks a lot more like metal. So I'm just going to go through uh, again with the uh, paintbrush on the mask. And uh, there we go. So it's getting a little bit better, but it's too much uh, black blobby. And because we're painting with such big brushes, stuff starts to get get laggy really fast. So that's a lot nicer. There's still some cloudiness on the back of the receiver, but it's a lot better now. So make a new layer called Scrapes. Or new scrapes, I think it is. Receiver scrapes, I believe.
believe, whatever. So I'm going to take my scrapes brush and I'm going to manually paint the scrapes. A lot of you are probably going, why isn't you just using that find edges method that that guy posted? And I say because it's garbage. No, I just, I prefer the look. This looks a lot nicer, I think. It just looks more, more human than trying to do like an automatic method. And plus, you're, you're spending about equal time. So I'm just painting a pure white on 100% opacity with my special brush that I'll include with this tutorial and that I've posted around on like a billion different sites. It's very, very simple. And what that'll do is it'll just give you rough edges. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase this using uh, the mask. I'm just going to paint black on the mask at a lower opacity. I think usually I use around 70 or 65% uh, opacity. So I'm doing this because scrapes don't wear perfectly. Uh, when stuff scrapes off, it doesn't just uniformly scrape off or not. It does in between scrapes, you know. So, uh, that's starting to look okay. It's just starting to make something look interesting, at least. So I'm going to select some pieces here, and I'm going to start, uh, just fix up the color blob, the blobbiness for now. And, uh, also fix up the brightness, as this part is silver. And therefore, it should be silver not black. Now, actually, this part is not silver on the real gun, but on many AK-47s, uh, it is. And also, you kind of need something to look uh, look at, instead of it all just being black. I also really like to hand paint textures, or hand paint uh, scrapes, just because it's more fun. And I really like to put a lot of care into my textures. And, uh, instead of painting pure white, I decided to change it over to a levels layer. And so now I'm just painting all the scrapes on a mask for the levels layer. And you can see now how we're scraping it off. Real nice, like... So that's a nice looking scrape there. And uh, just going back and doing stuff at lower opacity. And uh... Just remember not to, uh, not to scrape up everything, because only stuff that's really exposed should be scraped. Something I just did there also is I made uh, some roughness on the, the scrapes using that special brush that I just said like a couple minutes ago. So that's really nice. Uh, we're starting to get there. But this is only the beginning. I've only gone like five minutes in or less. I don't know, something like that. So I just deleted my old scrapes layer because I don't need that anymore because I'm doing it on a mask now. So just keeping keeping the scrapes going. I'm gonna spend quite a while painting scrapes. It's quite an intensive process. And I think that's why a lot of people like doing more automatic methods. However, I just far prefer the result that this gives you. I think taking an hour or less to paint all the scrapes on the entire weapon is a lot. It is 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 a good sacrifice uh, that I'm I'm willing to take. So there's some ugly uh, ugly blobbiness on the bolt. So I'm gonna go fix that real quick because. I just noticed that. 
and also on the bottom of the receiver and stuff. So also, if you notice, my, my metal base texture is not very cloudy or anything. That's why I had to manually add in the clouds. Or the, the blobbiness. Whatever. Some I said. Now also right there, uh, that area that I'm, I'm scratching out, or whatever, uh, on the corner, that's that part I said would stretch. Now if we go probably look at the model again, when we get back to that, then you'll notice that it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really look stretched at all unless you get up really close. So that's exactly what I was looking for. And I'm going to go all, also back and uh, edit that later. So, uh, so, uh, if you pause that, or whatever, right there, when it zooms in, you can definitely take a look at that and see that it doesn't stretch really bad. And it gives you a smooth result. You could also totally, like, split that right there. Split the UVs, but I don't want to do that because then it's harder to texture on. Especially once you're using a base texture, because uh, with a lot of older, like, diffuse-only textures, you, um... You don't really use a base, like, you can, but I don't, I don't, I prefer to work from straight gray. So, if you're working with straight gray, it's a lot easier to fix seams than working with a base. So, right now I'm painting the scrapes for the dust cover, which I later removed because they made no sense whatsoever. Uh, somebody gave me a tip, and he was like, wait, why are there scrapes there? I'm like, well, because it looks cool, and he's like, well totally doesn't make any sense at all. Because what is it scraping against? I'm like, well, nothing. Just there to look cool. So I'm like, well, I should probably delete it then. I don't know, I like making stuff look cool, but at the same time, I kind of want to keep some realism in there. Because this is a realistic item. So now I'm using a one pixel brush that's uh, got, I think, scattering or opac op opacity jitter on. I think opacity jitter. Uh, and so I'm just erasing it and making long streaky uh, scrapes out of it. So this uh, this little area here is probably not, you know, it's probably not the best looking thing, but it's a good thing for technique. If I uh, show you. Like, yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever why, why those scrapes are there, but they kind of look cool, don't they? It's a real river. So uh, I'm going back in now, also doing more scrapes. I I unchecked the what's it layer. Oh, I uh, I hid the the base layer temporarily while I'm painting the scrapes. You can probably barely see it, but I could when I did. So just adding some little nicks and stuff. Dents and whatnot. Uh, this little area here is probably where the dust cover would get worn off the most if it's scraped at all. But it doesn't appear like it, it does scrape very much. But, uh, making scrapes try to have some sort of flow, by the way. In this, uh, dust cover, I probably didn't demonstrate that the best, but, uh, just saying. Like, no retarded 90 degree angles or whatever. Everything should flow really well. Flow is extremely important. So that's not terrible right there, but uh, I need to fix some of it up. Uh, 
So now I'm doing some directional scrapes. Directional scrapes are important because they help define uh, like the direction of how stuff is scraping. Obviously, that's why they're called directional scrapes. Uh, moving scrapes, if you will. So I'm just going to duplicate them around and uh, edit them a bit. Someone keeps calling. Dental marketers. So yeah, edit that. Once we've, once we've edited it, uh, you won't notice that it's been copied at all. So now what I'm doing here is I'm painting some uh, some extra shadows, and uh, these shadows are because I didn't bake any AO there, so now I have to manually add some shadows in. Um, I didn't manually bake any AO here because it's a moving part, and uh, the problem with baking in moving parts is that uh, they usually leave a shadow, and when that shadow moves, or uh, when the object moves, the shadow doesn't, because the shadow is static on the diffuse map, and uh, on everything else, so it's not good. So, uh, especially like under the charging handle and stuff, that's something uh, that I didn't want to bake. Uh, even though the cheese stick here. It's good. So now I'm uh, adding some shadow on the bottom of this thing, just to soften the uh, soften the edge a little bit, so it's not such a sudden cut off between light and dark. That totally sounds like a movie subtitle. So right there, you can kind of see a little bit of the seam, but I'll edit that later. Or the stretching. So, uh, I'm gonna paint the scrapes on these little, uh, thingy or bob. So, Puppies. So uh, yeah, just mostly more painting scrapes, more of the same. But I really did want to put a uh, attention on this one area though, because uh, I used somebody else's texture for as a reference for these some of these scrapes. I based it on uh, based on their texture and uh, really nice texture buddy of mine. Actually, two buddies of mine. One of them edited it. But I really like how they did the scrapes, so I was trying to trying to incorporate some of that style into my texture. So uh, doing some of the uh, more open edges and also uh, duplicating the these things and uh, just gonna move them over and then duplicate some edges or I can repaint them whatever.
And, uh, yep, just repainting it. So, uh, for this, I'm, uh, duplicating the totally wrong thing again, and, uh, yeah, just fixing up some of the, the distances, placing of these edge scrapes. So I'm uh, adding in the wireframe so we can see where everything is. And uh, yep, just adding in some scrapes. No big deal. Yep, more of the same. Like this is most of my texturing is focusing on getting the edging perfect. Because I think that's something that's totally, uh, totally a big deal. So I'm just going to continue to paint the scrapes. And also fooling around with this computer. This little 200 megahertz laptop that I found laying around. I don't know, I can play Commander Keen on it. Not really much else. And uh, really overdoing the scrapes on this part because I like the look of that. And uh, I'm going to definitely wear that out a lot. Get rid of a lot of those scrapes because I did far too much. And uh, just trying something here. I'm definitely going to remove this later because it looks stupid. Yep, looks totally stupid. I deleted it. Yep. So yeah, doing it way, way too much. So uh, yeah, it's a lot. Way too noisy scrapes there. By the way, pro tip, don't make your scrapes noisy.
So yeah, we can see that uh, the scrapes have progressed a lot. And uh, definitely, definitely looking a lot better. Uh, really detailed now. So looking a lot better. Now I'm playing with the background color, so it's not perfectly. It's not. It's not perfect black. It's not in the. It's not in the negatives. It's not the sub black. I also turn on the sun. Show this where the sun is, just because it's kind of cool. And uh, just editing the scrapes a little bit more. Yay. Yeah, so it's just a lot of uh, erasing the, the scrapes using a uh, black paintbrush. That's the majority of it. And uh, the receiver took the most time because that's right in your face and you need to you need to look at it a lot. So it's advisable if you take the most time on that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, more scrapes, just redoing this this one part, because uh, I didn't like how it came out, so I wanted to redo it. Not too much else. And uh, adding a couple nicks and whatnot. And also uh, redoing some of these scrapes up top. So, again, basically, um, Basically, my, my method for doing scrapes is just lay down a base scrape using the uh, using that brush that I made. Then simply taking that same brush, making uh, an eraser or black. Also, that's a lot nicer looking scrape. Um, making an eraser or black, depending on how how you're doing that. And then uh, once that's uh, once that's done. I uh, I go back and I do it you know as many times as it needs to look nice, and then I'm going and uh, taking a one pixel brush, and then that's it, just erasing that with the one pixel brush. Easy stuff. So, uh, yep, just more scrape painting.
and uh, just playing around with the with the stuffs. So uh, adding some more flow into the te into the scrapes. You can notice that they're more more round now. So now just taking a taking a look at the textures that I was using as a reference. They're really nice uh, diffuse only textures, but they are diffuse only. That's why I was using them as a reference. Diffuse only, I think, is more uh, it's more pleasing to texture because you just get an instant look at how it is on the texture instead of having to go back and forth and try to you know deal with every single light situation and whatnot. You just got your painted lighting, and that's pretty much it. But otherwise, I think this gives a nicer result. That's just me. And I'm crazy. I'm a dark moo moo. And uh, flipping around these uh, scrapes, just making them easier. They don't look identical either, which is which is key. Because if you have scrapes that look identical and they're right next to each other, you're gonna notice. Same with any kind of tiling texture. That's why you gotta make them slightly different, or gotta be really good at making tiling textures. <laughs> so uh, this part here, just more scraping off. Ugh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> Trying to move over the freaking thing or bob viewport. And uh, adding more nicks, even though that wouldn't be there. And scraping stuff off again. And empty my recycle bin. Let's go on the internet. I like the internet. So now I'm adding a color blob texture just to get a little bit of uh, color variation in. So now adding a little bit of text.
So uh, now I'm adding in the color to the uh, metal base and uh, playing around with the contrast and whatnot. The contrast on the uh, diffuse, I way, way uh, lessened. I think it, it was for the better. It's just smoother. Um, so now I don't know what I'm doing. Taking a bit more uh, reference from that texture than I did. And, uh, increasing the intensity of these scrapes a little bit by using curves. And, uh, taking a break for lunch, I think. Or dinner, whatever. And I made it darker a little bit, and I think it really helps to make the texture stand out. So I'm uh, adding some more, uh, just more, more refined kind of scratches, just to get some more uh, texture into it into the receiver. They're going the other, the other, they're going the other way, but they're they're following the flow of the in the shape of the receiver, so it's okay, I think. Plus, I'm erasing it really a lot so that it's really fine. So, I'm uh, playing a little bit more with the levels. And this, the uh, scratches to put back in. Oops, sorry about any mic noise. I had to get up and turn the light on because it decided to be really dark really fast. So uh, making some more miscellaneous scrapes and uh, and whatnot, whatnot. And uh, duplicating onto the other side, and you won't see it on the other side. Looks better a bit. So, just adding some more miscellaneous scrapes and whatnot. Uh, looking a lot better now from uh, first person view.
So I'll remove some of the more uh, moving scrapes because they're not needed. And uh, racing that. Don't need it. Talk to somebody. He says, no way, those should not be there. So uh, I think this was about where I where I had it on the final one. I might have done a little bit more work, but uh, unsure. So uh, yeah, I think that was about it. That's where I got that upper receiver part, and uh, that's where I finished on. So uh, just gonna continue here. And uh, go along the bottom with uh, some more heavy scrapes. Just to kind of give an outline of the uh, shape of this thing. And, uh, yep, go over with the same brush again. And uh, doing the more moving kind of scrapes, getting rid of it using just the one pixel brush again. Looking good. It's looking a lot better now. It's not bad. And uh, just adding some scripts around this little bump thingy. I don't know. Uh, adding the black part down here where the switch thingy is. I don't know what it is. And uh, really starting to
Right now I'm adding uh, this blobbiness around some of the uh, some of the bumpy like uh, switch stubs or whatever you call them, and uh, makes them look a little bit more worn as if somebody's disassembled the gun once or twice. Ow. And uh, adding some random like paint chipping on the uh, on some of these switch stubs, just using uh, bumpiness. And uh, it really looks pretty nice, I think. One might say that it looks pretty good. And uh, just going back and doing some more work to the receiver. That's a pretty, uh, pretty important part. Now I'm just adding some more edging to this little part in the back. And uh, going back in, uh, fixing up some of the selections and stuff on the uh, bumped out parts. Just making the uh, selection smaller, basically. And uh, now I'm removing it on the indented bits so that they're dark and not bright. And uh, there we go, that's pretty nice. Just going around and uh, doing this stuff up. And uh, looking pretty nice now. Now going down and um, adding more splotchiness. Looking pretty good. And uh, going back over and doing some more stuff.
and uh going through and uh, adding this little uh, part where paint would be scraped off, like paint would be uh, gently rubbed off because of uh, the person, the operator, pulling the charging handle. And so I'm just shaping it out, making sure it's, everything's where it needs to be. It needs to be. <laughs> so that looks really good. And uh, we're going to go over that. In uh, just a second. So we're adding uh, some pixel, pixel wear. You know, pixel line-y stuff. And uh, moving it over just a little bit to uh, about where where it starts should be about under the charging handle or whatever you call it. So now I'm just going to paint some uh, orange in the area of the site there, for whatever reason, I don't know, site's orange on the real thing, it's weird, uh, just adjusting the color there real quick, and uh, blending mode, whatnot, putting it uh, above some of the AO stuff so I can uh, get a little bit better color, so there it is, not bad, it's visible. So, looking pretty good, so far. So, uh, I'm just going to copy over some of the scrapes and then flip them. Just to get an uh, easy start off on stuff. So now I need to go and I need to delete some of the some of the stuff that's not there on the other side. Uh, some stuff is too large and doesn't fit on the, the current parts that are normal normal in there, so I'm gonna need to repaint some of the stuff. But that's okay. So, uh, yep, just repainting the, the stuff that I uh, messed up. So we're getting there. It's looking pretty good so far. And uh, edging stuff that should be should be edged on this on this area. Adding extra garbage. And uh, really putting a lot of care into this section. I don't know why. And uh, doing the same for down there. I could actually just copy and paste, but I don't want to. Because uh, it's not as much a dragging scrapes as usual.
So now I'm going to do the uh, this scrape for the fire selector switch that everybody seems to like to do for uh, AKs. And I uh, really, really edit this one a lot. Give it that l really sharp look. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. That's a really good, uh, good example of a scrape for that. So that's nice and solid. And uh, just uh, keep keep going over it until it's to the point where I like it enough. That's not bad. I like it. Really detailed scrapes there. They're not perfect, uh, but they're pretty detailed and not not bad. Uh, just going in and uh, editing the scrapes a little bit more. Just keep uh, refining them. And uh, just looking at this a little bit more in varying light conditions. So starting to scrape up the fire selector switch. Just getting a little bit of that going. There's really not much else new to explain here because it's all the same method for scrapes. And uh, just keep going over it. This is what I'm doing. It's not bad, but I need to turn on the wireframe so I can uh, I can go and do that inside section. I'm also going to copy that up, and uh, I accidentally I think duplicated it. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Ugh, I should have just repainted it. Just uh, keep painting them in. Keep painting. I removed some of the scrapes on the bottom of the fire selector because I don't think they were uh, they were doing much. Check out my reference pictures a bit more. And uh, grabbing some of the text for the uh, fire selector switch. I uh, photo sourced the, this text instead of doing uh, doing it with text because I wanted more of that that font, and I couldn't find anything that matched. And this worked just fine, as you can see. And uh, I'm trying to do some scaling and whatnot. I end up fooling around with this a lot. Or far too much. And 
and uh, go over with some grunge brush because this is very cheaply uh, cheaply painted on text. Uh, just going back to the side now, considering this is going to be the side that is going to be seen the most. So we got that text in. And uh, just going to photo source in the bottom where the mag goes in. Because uh, I forgot, I totally forgot to model that. And why should I model that? Because you're never ever going to see it. So I'm just going to use uh, some photos and plop that in there. Run, run through it with the normal map filter later. And uh, do it the proper way. So uh, just using uh, brightness contrast now to kind of get this going and uh, soften out the edges so you're not just a uh, flat square. So now I'm going to add a drop of shadow to signify that it's recessed and uh, full off brightness. Square off the edges a little bit more. There we go. So you probably can't see it in this at all. But uh, earlier I had a light set up that that did. I added the uh, three point light set up in, and that that functions. So I could uh, see what I did. So just uh, adding some blobby wear, I think, to the uh, to the fire selector, considering it's a, a very used part. I think it deserves a little bit more blobby wear. Uh, just doing it on the fire selector switch tip thingy. Just uh, taking a look at it through FPS view and through Iron Sights view. And uh, now I'm gonna add in. Uh, I'm gonna start making the magazine. I guess I got bored of you know damaging everything by hand, so I just went and I did the. Uh, I'm doing the magazine. I'm just uh, trying to get the color right and get the brightness and stuff. 
So then we grab pictures of like uh, fiberglass and uh, plastic, and uh, also I use plywood for the for the swirliness that's uh, that comes with uh, the backlight, backlight magazine. Bonka light. I'm just called bonka light. And uh, painting out some of the swirls so it's seam the seams go away, desaturating, getting rid of some of the knots and whatnot. <laughs> whatnot. Oh man, puns. So I'm adding some of the fiberglass uh, stuff to get that that uh kind of fibrous look just kind of paint that in with the uh, stamp tool, clone stamp. Okay. So if you look really close, it'll uh, it look very, it looks very fibrous and yeah, just tone that down very. Just want it very slight and uh, fool out the color a little bit more. And uh, it's actually supposed to be a lot more yellow, but uh, I'm a sample of the color. And uh, just really trying to fine tune the color, but uh, yeah, sampling the color in so I can get the real color. And uh, I just decided, just decided to do it with a color fill layer. There we go. That's not bad. So I gotta just save it using the action. There we go. That's not bad. There's some seams in the back, but it's not gonna be really noticeable. We can just say that it's because of that backlight's a plastic and that's how yeah, dude, I don't know. So, uh, using pictures of, like, animal hairs and whatnot for an even more fibrous look. Uh, just gonna contrast it down and get it a little bit more consistent, and then use, uh, clone stamp to even that out a little bit more. Get some more of that directional grain. And uh, really tweak that opacity going. Save it up. Take a look at the refs and uh, see what's up. Add in a couple like uh, like nicks and whatnot, scratches, wood and wood and uh, this kind of stuff chips a lot differently and uh, scrapes a lot differently than say metal or plastic actually chips a lot better it chips a lot like uh, it, it chips and dents a lot like plastic but uh, when it scrapes off it reveals a lighter color usually but uh, I only did it very slight at the end because I didn't like how it came out Shadow and uh, deleting whatever. It's just adding these little tiny nicks. So that's not too bad. But yeah, I turn it real way down. Because this uh, uh, Bonka Light magazine, it seems to wear a lot like wood. It seems to act a lot like wood, too. But I uh, add a lot of blobbiness now and get some real texture in there. And I uh, make it a little bit more brown and get that friggin' animal hair out of my face. There we go. Give it a little bit of brown tint.
So just uh, taking a look at the grunge a little bit more. And uh, moving that all to its own group because I forgot to do that. It happens. So the receiver and the magazine are really starting to come together now. Really looking good. The magazine is not the most accurate thing in the world, but it sure functions. So just uh, trying to see if there's anything else I can add that that'll give it a little bit of an interesting look. So I decided to uh, take a look at some plaster. Get some of that in there. Could probably mimic that with brushes, but I don't feel like it. Probably no need when you could just go grab a photo. I don't know. I shouldn't have said that because it probably made a lot of people mad. And I just made myself mad too. So I'm, yeah, don't even take that. And, yeah, don't. No. Forget I said anything. Don't, don't forget what I said in this video. But just. just you get it. So uh, just start on the plastic grip. The grip I chose is the plastic grip, not the plum gl plum grip, because I thought that looks really stupid. And uh, right now it's really simple. It stays pretty simple until about the end when I go and uh, add in the critique and whatnot. So just adding the square shape for the grip pattern, which is just going to be a uh, on a layer far above everything else. This has a generic grip pattern that I made a while ago for diffuse stuff. It'll bump okay, I think. Bumps good enough at least.